Hey guys, it's Scott again. So I bought an engine, bought a new engine. So we got a 2019 Gen 4 Jabiru engine. Uh, the old engine is, um, old engine's in a box over there uh, under the table. Still wondering what I'm going to do with that. Uh, the vultures are circling, so it may be worth something to someone. Uh, I don't want to get into what actually happened with that engine, but you can't buy confidence. So I was lucky enough, to, fortunate enough to be in a position where I could afford a brand new 2019 Jabiru engine. So I put my order in. Uh, we're in June 19 now, uh, end of June. So I, basically four weeks ago, I put my order in. A uh, new engine rocked up. So I just thought I'd run through a bit of the installation of that engine, a few little tips. I did search the internet to try and help me out to find, you know, where the engine actually stops and the airframe starts, what you're gonna get with the new engine. Um, so I'll just run through that if you like, if it helps one person, uh, because I found it difficult online to find anything someone had done before. Uh, it all sort of starts as well with the shape, shape of the engine cows, etc. There's three or four versions, I think, of the Jabiru, of the nose with the, the, uh, air in, uh, the air intakes, etc. at the front. Um, but you go through that the process when you order your new engine. So the new engine rocked up on TNT. I think I've got some photos of that, which I'll throw in. Um, but I'll just step you through, basically, uh, the issues I had, I guess, with the installation. So we'll have a look. So with the new engine, um, while you place, place your order, took off the old engine, basically down to the uh, engine mount frame. I put a, because of the issues I had, I also ordered a new oil filter, uh, which is down the bottom here. Um, what I've got on my aircraft, I'm always chasing temperatures, 85 degrees being optimum for this aircraft. So in the winter, I've got an air dam in there, um, which helps a little bit. So that's sort of my summer configuration, if you like when you're still chasing temperatures. But for winter and days like today, it's um, only eight degrees sort of maximum today. I've got a bit of foam that I actually fly with. Um, I used to have a white bit in the front there and people would sort of stop me on the taxiway and think I had a bung left in the front. But I've got a bit of foam uh, in there. We just sort of half a hole. And that gets me up to about 80 degrees in the middle of winter. So we're chasing temperatures there. Um, as far as the engine goes, uh, what did we have to do? We had to manufacture a um, special tool to compress the engine mount rubbers. Uh, the Jabiru manual just says to use a G-clamp. That's fine up on top. I haven't dropped the bottom cow, so access is a bit hard here, but we can work with it. The, um, the bottom engine mounts, we, I'll try and get a photo. We manufactured a um, sort of your own G-clamp. There's a 7 16th bolt. Actually, the head of the bolt goes in the subframe there. So you need to sort of compress uh, those guys about to do it will understand what I mean. Compress the rubbers enough to get the nut started and then torque goes up. The actual aluminium uh, or alloy washers, which is like a top hack sec section, bottom out on the airframe there as well, on the engine frame. Uh, as far as fitting the new engine, we took the carby off uh, down there. I found it easier to pull the, pull the carby out to do all your throttle linkages, etc., um, and then replace the carby. When you get the engine, you get a new carby, but you don't get the, the fiberglass shroud or horn attached to the carby, doesn't come with the engine. Also, with your main fuel lines, so from the carby up to your fuel pump, it comes with the engine, but then this fuel line here uh, from your firewall coming from your firewall up through your fuel presser switch into the bottom of your fuel pump, uh, that line is not supplied, nor is the fire um, protection blanket. So little things like that you sort of can catch you out. Uh, obviously I replaced all the fuel tube, brand new fuel tube, but had to, I salvaged the old sleeve the, the fire heat proof blanket if you like um, to, re, to recover that so a, there are a few issues like that on the engine that uh, definitely keep the parts if you're in my situation and you're replacing an old engine with new 
Um, keep that handy so that you can uh, borrow a certain amount of stuff from that engine. For my aero modeling stuff, I use fresh Tigon tubing for your breather from your carby up to your airbox. And also the other yellow line you can see down here is just your fuel pump drain. New line for the oil pump. Uh, the Gen 4 engine also <coughs> has a, a much better um, oil dipstick with the three holes in it. So you can read that nice and, e nice and easy. Uh, don't be too alarmed, I'm, st I'm still on running oil uh, for the first 25 hours. So it is, it's dark to start with, darker oil as opposed to the clear stuff. You do fit a new voltage regulator um, and part of the installation on a 160D model anyway is to um, short out or disconnect the yellow yellow wire. Um, what that does, I believe, uh, from what I've read, that was giving power to the main bus and would power your gauges constantly and so overnight your battery would, would go flat. I also replaced the battery so I've got an Odyssey PC625 battery installed there, uh, 1st of May 19. Um, that was the initial start of my problems so I fitted a, uh, fitted a new battery. Also with the old engine, um, the negative uh, wire, the starter cable, um, which goes straight to your battery, that had to be salvaged off the old engine as well. So you have to keep that if you do an engine change. Uh, some differences, the new voltage regulator because you've got a new alternator system on the Gen 4 engine and it comes with this, uh, they call it a circuit breaker. The, the new alternator fitted and the new regulator, the problem I had or it's, it's described in the installation procedure anyway with the, the paperwork you get with a new voltage, voltage regulator. In the cockpit, um, my aircraft was fitted with a charge light. So, particular just here. So you get a low voltage or a, you know, your alternator is not charging your battery. Um, so once I installed it, and it is actually highlighted, like I said, in the Jabiru paperwork, um, the charge light was constantly on. So how did I fix that? At the moment, I'm waiting for Jabiru to get back to us to explain how we fixed that, um, because I've got no, if the alternator was to fail, I've got no indication apart from the um, voltage on the battery uh, gauge, but the charge light was illuminated red constantly. So obviously I just disconnected the, um, the wires to the globe. Sounds dodgy, but that's what we did. Uh, I'm, waiting, I'm waiting to hear back on um, Jabiru. Once I hear back, we'll uh, sort something out. So the circuit breaker, the way that's wired in, uh, the old aircraft, you just had the two, um, two terminal wires going to the alternator. So one goes to the spare, uh, spare terminal on the so-called circuit breaker and the other one obviously just goes into the wire. So it's fairly easy to set it all up. Uh, what else can I say? So the engine went together fairly well. I was concerned that things like the oil might be in a different spot to the um, oil filler cap on the cow, but all that turned out well and Jabiru helped out really well. Uh, don't, don't underestimate the amount of work still left in the air ducts. Um, once again, the aero modeling side of me come out, got the Dremel out and I, you know, made it a nice fit. The instruction or the publication online is still for the older style and depends what sort of aircraft you've got, etc. So what I did was, um, so on the Gen 4 engine with this style of intake, etc. I used the first, left the first thin slot vacant and put the air ducts in the second one. Uh, also, so once you dremel it all out for your rocket covers, etc., uh, rivet these on. I used a bit of five minute araldite and um, actually some initially some super glue and tack, tack those in place and then riveted them on once they're in the right location. The spring location, um, <coughs> previous Jabiru's and most of the other ones I've seen have a spring here down to the cylinder. On the new Gen 4, the spring. Um, very over-engineered, I think, but I utilised those lugs 
down in there off the engine block um, with the spring coming up to a riveted tab on the inside of the air duct in there just to hold and they, and they are firm but they're not going anywhere uh, the back oh, there's not much rocking there at all um, so I just reiterate don't underestimate it took just about as long to do these air ducts as it did to fit the engine the cooler tube which goes to your uh, magnetos um, or the coil has to be all glued in place um, on the inside had to build a bit of a, a mount if you like for the tube to rest on and then uh, I call it camel snot but it's a mix of epoxy and micro balloons which is part of my error modeling background I guess um, but mixed all those up um, to, get, to get them all nicely positioned in there <coughs> uh, at the front just move the prop gently you've also got to install your air dams if you like or air deflectors so as you can see the had to cut your supplied with this uh, 90 degree bend in a bit of uh, fiberglass although it might have a bit of Kevlar in it I think um, threw up a few sparks when I cut it um, in against the cylinder heads what I found with the the Gen 4 engine because all the fins are nice and flat straight across the front you haven't got any ins and outs or whatever to allow for so I just uh, basically drew a pencil line uh, where the fins touch the cowl fitted it at home in the nice warm uh, garage um, installed the duct with 30 minute epoxy and micro balloons however you need a good cure time on that so that's where you're to allow a fair bit of time same on the right hand side a little bit more uh, let's get in focus there a little bit more mucking around you've got a that uh, recess there for your oil cooler uh, but just take your time pencil a line sand fit sand fit sand fit till it fits i tacked it in with super glue once again sino um, and then a nice finger fillet on on uh, both sides of the of the air dam just to force the air up and over the back um, also you have to glue on the uh the rubber the rubber strip with a 12 12 mil overhang worked well for me in my situation so it tucks in nicely it's actually a tight fit to get the cows back on and again on this side uh, gluing the tube in and the uh, spark plug leads some people run a slip down the back like a cheetah just to get the leads in and out it sort of defeats the purpose a little bit because this would be running pressurized to force the air down over the back cylinders all right so i think i've pretty adequately covered the uh, work involved in that uh, first 25 hours we're going to run the run-in oil uh, aero shell 100 i think it is um, yeah nice new exhaust so i've got a nice new chrome exhaust uh, one thing with the exhaust pipe uh, I, you, I didn't receive the um, the heat exchanger shroud uh, that gives you the hot air up to your carby so when you open up carby heat that takes the, uh, the hot air off your nice shiny new chrome muffler but I had to use the old heat exchanger which wasn't supplied with the engine so it gets back to where the engine starts and stops so it stops at the muffler didn't get that got to be very careful with your um, also your cabin heat uh, heat exchanger down here because it hits the uh, bell crank of your nose wheel steering with what's that full left full right full right nose wheel steering deflection which just happens to be the way that I would do a UE on the runway doing my lineups um, you get a bit of a knock 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 um, so it's only at full deflection I've moved the sort of heat exchanger thing uh, or piece up as far as I could but now it actually hits onto the exhaust pipe itself uh, I'm not going to go full deflection in flight it's only during taxi all right um, if you've got any questions obviously just shoot them through and I can answer that if anyone's in this situation um, whether I've done something glaringly wrong as well but uh, at the moment the engines are running really well and haven't got any issues at all so that is the installation of the gen 4 engine just to, once again the key points you need a special tool to uh, 
compress the engine mounts. Top one seems fairly easy, but once you go through it, um, talk to someone who's done it, make up some tools and new hoses, fit the engine. Oh, the propeller. Believe it or not, uh, the propeller, which is marked, um, so you remove the propeller, prop and spinner, same thing, sorry, the propeller and spinner. Uh, so the back plate, spinner, and the front nose plate, marked all those with the location of the prop. However, the problem I ran into, the installation calls for with the magnets vertical, um, which I've got there. It took, oh, I reckon, probably a dozen goes to work out the combination of where the bolts go um, to get the prop in the right spot, the spinner back plate, and the spinner fitting correctly. And I know it was all, yes, we marked it all before we took it off, but I think it's something to do with the relation of the new prop hub on the engine um, compared to the last one. So it may not make sense right at the moment. But trust me, it took a fair bit of head scratching just to get everything to line back up again and in the right spot for balance, etc. Um, I also flicked off, I don't know if you can see down in there, the previous owner had some propeller spinner like tyre weights in there. Um, after first flight, it had some high resonant sort of vibration, so I flicked those off and start again because this is an all new, all new setup. And now it seems fine. Um, well, I know it's fine. So yeah, okay. Uh, another little tip, quick tip. I went down to Super Cheap Auto in Australia and bought myself a crane. Lots of people around here said, yep, yeah, know someone who's got one and borrow one if you can get into the hangar, etc." So I bit the bullet, just went and bought a crane, which made it very handy. And get yourself some lights, because in here, very dark. So if you're going to change an engine, um, if you've got any questions, I've recently done one, so that was, uh, it's June 2019, uh, Gen 4 engine on Jabiru, so I'm more than happy to help someone out if they've got any questions. Cheers.